see, some of us know him. We already know him. If you saved, we know him as Savior. Then some of us know him as healer. Some of us know him as Jireh, who provides for us all the time. So each time, what does God do? So when that angel was spinning, and every time he look up, he say, holy. He spin again. He say, holy. Because that was the only way he could kind of describe the awesomeness of what was being revealed to him about God. And every day of our lives, I don't care whether you call it a bad day, the glory of God was revealed in that day. Because why? He brought you through the day and he had you in this place today. And that's why the scriptures say, forgetting those things that are behind. Welcome to Power of the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly. It emanates from right here where I'm standing. It's very rarely that I come out in the sanctuary and I do an opening, but I wanted to open the sanctuary up at the opening of the show to let you know I have a seat just for you. So if you enjoy Power in the Word each week, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. Then get a Bible, a pen, and a notebook, and let's get ready to experience the Word of God with revelatory teaching and power in our sanctuary. I'm so blessed that you tune in each and every week. But right now, let's get ready to go into the Word of God. And I'm going to come back after this and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. Until then, keep your faith stirred and get ready to be blessed and impacted of the God kind. We've been teaching on uh, the Christian Life series. We've covered a lot of ground in that series so far. Uh, I want you to turn real quickly to Jeremiah 31. And we want to read from verses 31 down to verse 40 for a foundation. Now, knowing that 8 o'clock service, we uh, finally got all the way all through. But we, we started talking early in this series about 10 things that we cannot live without. 10 things that we cannot live without. Those 10 things were basically the, uh, the Ten Commandments. We moved from there and we started talking about how God uh, wanted us to understand his covenants. So we told you that there were two things that God has on his mind all the time. Number one was his word. Everybody say his word and myself. Lay your hands on yourself. Say God is concerned about me. One more time. God is concerned about me. So two things that God has on his mind, thank you, sir, that God has on his mind at all times, you and I. So the best thing we could ever do is get familiar with his word. Matter of fact, Jesus said it like this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, I can't hear you, but by every, that does what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now what does proceed mean? Fresh rhema. Everybody say fresh rhema. So that doesn't mean what God was saying yesterday. What is God saying to you right now today? Amen. So I live by what God says. Come on, say that with me. I live by what God says in his word. Now say this with me. If I could find it in the word, it belongs to me. If I could find it in the word, it belongs to me. So we begin to discuss these covenants. And we talk about, first of all, the Edomic covenant, what happened in the Garden of Eden. The next covenant, there were actually eight covenants that God could made or conferred over onto man. So the first one was what he talked about, what was going to happen in the Garden of Eden. The second covenant was the Adamic covenant. After he created man, man fell. So God had to put something in place to keep man in constant contact and in relationship with him. You may not believe it uh, just through all that old teaching. Well, God, God's not a mean old man on the throne waiting to send you to hell. 
If a person goes to hell, they kind of go to hell on their own accord. It comes from rejecting everything that God has provided for. So God does things over and over again to keep us in contact with him, keep us connected with him, so that, that, that he, oh, glory. As a matter of fact, he said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that means God's in love with you. Touch yourself and say, God just loves me. God just loves me. Oh, grab your neighbor by the hand, look at two or three people and say, I want you to know God loves you too. Two or three people, tell them, tell them God loves you. Yeah, yeah. Now tell them God not mad with you. Yeah, tell them God isn't mad with you. Amen. Bible says, Bible says, while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for the ungodly. So what, what you got to understand, God was constantly trying to make a way of escape. I, I don't know why people through the past have tried to use fear to intimidate people into staying with God or believing God. But you ought to want to serve God just because God loves you. Shouldn't nobody have to make you serve God. When you wake up in the morning in your right mind, food on the table, clothes on your back, transportation, whatever, you ought to automatically, ought to be something in you automatically that ought to make you want to appreciate God and all that God has done for you and getting ready to do because you know he's not finished with you. As a matter of fact, the more revelation you get, that's just good. I just said, the more revelation we get, the more understanding we have about God. Watch this, the further God wants to bless us. See, revelation is progressive. That's why when that angel that sits around his throne, there's some, there's some celestial beings. We can't necessarily call them angels because they describe differently from angels. When he had three wings, three that covered his feet, three that covered his face, and three, the Bible says, he did fly. But every time, according to revelation, that he would turn and look at God, he'd holler holy. Why do you think that's so? And it don't have to be right because Dr. Robert said it, but I believe it's that every time he turned, he, they saw God in another way. Because God was constantly revealing himself to, to them. And what you have to understand, in your life, each and every day, God is constantly revealing another side of himself to you. See, some of us know him. We already know him. If you're saved, we know him as Savior. Then some of us know him as healer. Some of us know him as Jireh, who provides for us all the time. So each time, what does God do? So when that angel was spinning, and every time he look up, he say, hold it. He spin again. He say, hold it. Because that was the only way he could kind of describe the awesomeness of what was being revealed to him about God. And every day of our lives, I don't care whether you call it a bad day, the glory of God yeah. was revealed in that day. Because why? He brought you through the day and he has you in this place today. Amen. And that's why the scriptures say, forgetting those things that are behind. Yeah. See, I can't change what happened yesterday, but I can fix what's going on in my future. So we had the first covenant. We had the first covenant with the Edamic covenant, then the Adamic covenant, then the nomadic covenant, then the Abrahamic covenant, then the Mosaic covenant, which is the Ten Commandments. See, and so the reason why we're teaching this is so you can understand what's supposed to be transpiring and happening in your life. Then, then we move from the Adamic covenant to the Mosaic covenant to the Davidic covenant, Palestinian covenant. And now we're on the new covenant. So for the sake of time and reading foundation, I want you to go to Jeremiah 31. And we're going to read 10 little verses of Scripture because faith comes out, hearing by what? So you know this is not a reading drill. It's not a reading drill, but what, what this is is to get you get faith for your covenant so you'll understand it. Now, we, 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 we're going to read from verses 31 to verse 40, and then we're going to get into the discourse. There are eight characteristics of, of this covenant. Eight characteristics of the new covenant. All right. We, you have your scripture? Amen. I'm waiting on some of you. Do you have the scripture? Amen. amen. All the way I'm going to know you got it. You say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't over your mouth yet. Praise the Lord. Pass them a Bible. <laughs> All right. Ready? Let's read. Mm hmm. Hold on, some of y'all leaving some of us. Now we're reading together. And some of us can read fast, and some of us read slow. So let's get at a pace where everyone is reading together. Kind of like when we sing worship songs, uh, somebody may be singing in one key or octave, and then you got to find your key or octave, but when we get it all together and it's right, it sounds so harmonious. All right, ready? Let's read again. 31, ready? Read. Behold,
Mm-hmm. They did break, yes. Don't get tired. Come on. Behold, verse 38, the days come, saith the Lord that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hannah Hill unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring sh over against it upon the hill of... And there shall compass about and... Unto the Lord... It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down forever. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. One but ten verses. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about the eight characteristics of the covenant. Eight characteristics. First of all, write down the chronology of the covenant. Now, when you think of the word chronology, how many of you are wearing a watch? A watch, the formal name for a watch is chronometer. Now, there are two words generally used to keep time. One of those words is chronological, uh, chron chronological, and the other word is a Hebrew-Greek word, kairos, or cosmos. So cosmos means time as in the eternity. Chronos, where we get the word chronological or chronometer from, deals with a specific order, so to speak, one, two, three, four, five, like on your watch. In other words, set in time. Now, some scriptures, when you read the Bible, are in chronological order, but some of them are just chronos, and they're just in the Bible for our hearing, for our reading, and for our instruction. So that's why when you read the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, it doesn't always read or it wasn't always put together according to a time order. See, because a lot of times different books or different prophets were in the same time prophesying and they were overlapping each other. So when they put the Bible together, they just put it together for the best way they could. And then in the New Testament, some things are chronological and some things are not. But when we look at the word chronology, we're talking about the time period. Now, there are eight characteristics. The first one is the time period or the chronology of the covenant. Let's look at verse 31 through verse 33. If I could get me a strong reader so y'all won't have to get tired on the Lord. He don't get tired of blessing you. Give me a mic and somebody who don't mind reading real strong. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody raised their hand yet. Amen. All right, ready to read verse 31. Everybody focus on 31 through 33. Ready to read. Behold. There you, there you go. All right, read. The day comes. The day comes. Saith the Lord. Uh -huh, read. That I will make a new covenant with All right, the house so notice of Israel. Something. So notice he said the time comes. So that means somewhere in the future, 
God says, I'm going to establish this new covenant. Now go to Galatians 3, verse 13. Might need another mic. Might have to, have to get more than one real. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'm at number two. All right, give me that scripture. Ready to read it. Galatians 3, start at verse 13 for me. Ready to read. Christ have redeemed us from the curse Christ of the law. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Watch me. Look up. That means the word redeemed means to be bought out. Amen. See, there was a price paid for our sin. Our sin cost a whole lot of money. The Bible says it like this, for the wages of sin is death. Who died, Jesus? Amen. Read, Hunter, right there again. Ready to read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. All right, keep reading. Being made a curse for us. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, uh -huh. cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So now watch. What he did was he took our place. Because before when you came to the altar or before you came to worship, every time you would come, you had to bring a turtle dove, a lamb, a bull, or something to be offered on the altar. No matter how many times we had to kill this thing, every week when we come in, we had to bring it. Because it was not strong enough, glory to God, the blood that was in these animals was not strong enough to cover the sins of mankind. Now, let me show you how strong that blood was. First John, chapter 2. Write the scripture down first, then go find it. First John, chapter 2. Starting at uh, verse 2. You got it? Read it. And he is the propitiation. The word propitiation, that means high price. So it says here that Christ is the high price for our sins. Watch, read. And not for ours only. Not for ours only. But also for the sins of the whole world. So it's enough power in the blood of Jesus, not just to cover every believer's sin. Now, I don't know the demographics of the world right now, but next week I'm going to be able to tell you how many people they estimate to be in the world. But no matter how many that number is, no matter how far that number goes out, there's enough power in the blood of Jesus to cover sins, watch this, of folks that ain't even born yet. Oh, ain't nobody up in here. Read that verse again. Read that verse again. Ready to read. And he is the propitiation... For our sins. Now, how I many you know? Say this with me. The Bible is written to believers. See, so, so. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message in audio, CD, or DVD, write to Power in the Word, 351 Softcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611, or log on to our website at www.wordoflifecc.org. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Life Television Network now has its own website. To view Life Television Network, to listen to Life Radio Network, or to learn more about sponsorship and the many things Life Television Network has to offer, simply go to www.wordoflifetv.org. We here at Life Television Network and Life Radio Network thank you for your continued support. You can stay connected to Life Television Network through YouTube by going to the search bar and typing in the Word of Life TV Network. It's all in one word, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. Lastly, you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church by downloading its newest app to your mobile device and or iPad. 
simply go to the Google Play Store, the Apple Store, or Amazon.com. By downloading the app, you will have access to updated information, calendar events, and much more. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friends. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also business men. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. You need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it to be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons, and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could meet around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron, so there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcement is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries, or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Wow, wasn't that word good? I know I see you in the grocery stores, uh, in the street, at the football games, in the parks. Everyone's saying, Dr. Roberts, you're such a blessing to me. Well, if that word is being a blessing to you, then you should be a blessing to us. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. Man, I'm telling you, we got children's church. We have teen and young, what we call young people activities. We have a men and women fellowship. We have a Christian school. We, we have adult education programs. Whatever you need, uh, we believe that Word of Life Community Church is one of the churches that can meet those needs. So if you're out there and you don't have a church home or you're looking for somewhere to go where you can learn and grow and, and, and get the Word of God, God, man, so that you're so excited that you run in hell, back to hell, and your life is living full of peace, well, come out to one of the services at Word of Life Community Church. I want to make this your personal invitation for you and your whole entire family to come and be a part of this great service. Now, I'm holding in my hand a little book I wrote some time ago. This book is called What is Salvation? I want to get a copy of this book to you for free. That's right, free. It doesn't cost you anything but a stamp or a phone call. If you call or write us at the number located on the screen, or when my announcer comes back at the end of the broadcast and tell you how many you may obtain a copy of not only today's message, but also this book, What is Salvation? It's going to tell you about what salvation is, what salvation isn't. I want to put it in your hand. You may already be saved, but you need a vast understanding. Then you can read it, then you share it with someone else, or leave it in a bathroom, or in the club, <laughs> glory to God, or at the casino. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to get the word out, because Jesus is coming soon. If you're out there today, and you do not know Jesus Christ, Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Listen, I, I, listen, Christ came and he died for you. If you just watched the broadcast, I've been teaching from my Family Life series and we're talking about the covenant that really cannot be broken. Jesus gave his life for you. The Bible says, curses everyone that hangs on the tree. So
so that the blessing of Abraham can come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. God wants you to be with him. God doesn't desire that any believer, any human being goes to hell. I tell people in the church all the time, if a human being goes to hell, he or she will be out of their element. The Bible says that hell is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, you're human. God said he created man his image after his likeness uh, so that he could be with him. He could have fellowship with him. The greatest sin is when we reject receiving Christ as our Savior. So if you're out there right now, I want you to take time right now. Pray this prayer with me. Look at me right now. Look at this television. Don't you close your eyes. I want you to watch your life get changed. Pray this with me. Say, Father, I thank you that your word declares that if I would confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. So, Father, right now, I, I thank you that I have the strength, hallelujah, to release all alliances with darkness, Father. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. Jesus, come into my life and save me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, beloved, I know somebody's going to tell you that wasn't it, but if you prayed that prayer and you need clarity, I got scriptures to support what I say and what I teach. I need to get this book in your hand, but welcome to the family of God. For those of you who watch us each and every week, I want you to remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation?, simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. In East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.wordoflifeccc.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week for another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless.